I got those up, two, three, four Occupation G.I. Blue two, three, From my G.I. hair to the heels of my G.I. shoe And if I don't go stateside soon I'm gonna blow my fuse Hi guys, something new from me. As you'll have seen from my videos, I have quite an interest in the Cold War and I've been recently getting into the Fallout series of video games. I thought I'd do a video series on sort of military technology and proposed designs uh, that in the real world that actually kind of parallel those that were developed in the Fallout universe. And today we're going to be looking at nuclear-powered tanks. So here we have one of the pre-war uh, tank designs, uh, a wrecked tank uh, that can be found in the Fallout 4 gameplay. It's a monstrosity, uh, it really is. It looks uh, very much almost like it's been slapped together. In a way, I wish the design had been made a little bit more uh, realistic, I suppose, but it, it fits with the Fallout universe quite well, really. It seems to have been based on late war, uh, late Second World War, early 50s designs with the big cast turret. The hull doesn't really bear any resemblance to any actual tank uh, with the, the multiple tracks. Uh, I was reminded of the T-30 heavy tank, uh, which I've put a photograph of here, and a brief little um, clip of a video of it firing, uh, test firing at Aberdeen Proving Grounds. And another likely source of inspiration would be the M46 Patton tank, which is cited on the uh, Fallout wiki. Um, and I think this is a likely source of inspiration for the Fallout uh, tank because it is, in fact, uh, it does appear in both the mural in the Museum of Freedom and it also appears in a photograph used on uh, in one of the game trailers for Fallout 3, uh, which is actually a photograph taken during the Korean War but being used to represent troops fighting in, in Alaska um, against the Chinese in the Fallout timeline. That seems to be the, the inspiration for the tank. Obviously, the main reason for this video and the uh, sort of most interesting feature is the fact that it's supposedly nuclear powered and there were in fact um, designs floating around in the 50s projected designs for nuclear powered tanks which we'll have a look at now. So uh, all three of the designs we'll be looking at are American in origin. The main advantage of nuclear power in all three cases um, was argued as being the relative lack of need for refueling uh, when compared to combustion power. The first tank to look at is uh, was known as the TV-1, or the design rather, it was never built of course. Uh, it was a fairly conventional design by nuclear powered tank standards. Quite a large vehicle weighing 70 tonnes, so a heavy tank. Uh, armed with a 105mm gun, uh, front armour was to be over a foot thick. Um, the interior layout shows five crew, the normal three crew in the turret, commander, gunner and loader, uh, with the driver up front in the hull as is normal. Uh, the fifth man is a nuclear engineer uh, operating a control panel in the rear of the tank, apparently. Um, the power system is shown. The proposed nuclear drive would have taken the form of a direct cycle nuclear turbine, uh, drawing air directly through the reactor situated at the front of the vehicle uh, where it would be heated. The resultant expansion uh, would be used to drive a turbine coupled to a generator, both beneath the turret, and the tracks are driven then by electric motors. And the air from the reactor, the hot air from the reactor, is then exhausted uh, to the atmosphere at the rear of the tank. Um, okay, problems with the design. First, unlike the heavy tank in Fallout 4, uh, which is meant to be fusion powered, the TV-1's reactor would be a miniaturised fission reactor. Uh, so there are obvious problems for the crew in terms of shielding, particularly the driver. Uh, indeed, it was postulated at the time crews would have to be rotated very regularly to avoid lethal radiation. Uh, lethal irradiation. So. Besides this problem, anyone operating near this tank would also be at risk uh, because it's a direct cycle nuclear turbine. The air exhausting out the back has just passed through the core of an operating nuclear reactor and um, would we'll likely be carrying all sorts of irradiated impurities, dust, etc. Um, needs to say the TV-1 didn't get beyond the proposal stage uh, with a relatively small scale model made. Um, the design did not completely die a death. Uh, the next tank to consider, the R-32, is in some ways an updated and refined design. Uh, it's lighter at 50 tonnes, so sort of heavy end of the medium class. Um, it would have mounted a 90mm main gun as opposed to 105. The protection was scaled back to just under 5 inches frontal armour, so the idea seems to be to make a slightly more practical vehicle as nuclear tanks go again. 
Uh, looking inside, we can see the reactor is still up front. Uh, the bulky control panel at the back is gone, and so this reactor is presumably of a more easily managed design. Uh, that said, all the problems with the radiation still exist, as this is apparently still a direct cycle drive. There's the problem with fission as opposed to the fictional miniature fusion drive in the Fallout 4 tank. Maybe the US Army and the Fallout universe did develop these nuclear-powered designs with the fission reactors and set about irradiating test crews in a remote Nevada test site at some point prior to the development of their miniaturized fusion reactors. Who knows? Uh, perhaps the most striking design, or the last one we're going to look at, is that for the Chrysler, uh, Chrysler TV-8, which really plays up to the 50s sort of space-age look. The turret uh, has an outer, thinner skin over the armour to give it that sleek sort of shape. The entire crew was housed in the turret, as was, was, a pa as was the power plant. Um, the, tracks were given, uh, the tracks were driven via a generator and then electric motors as the final drive. And the tank was also supposed to be amphibious, uh, as the turret gave enough displacement. Uh, propulsion would have been by water jets. Um, this is a tank designed with a nuclear battlefield in mind, uh, with tactical nuclear weapons going off. Um, which is one of the reasons for its shape, uh, which to deflect relative low-yield low um, nuclear explosions. Uh, an external vision was via CCTV, which is also part of this ethos, is to protect against the flash from uh, nuclear explosions. Um, what's even crazier about this design is that it actually reached the prototype stage. A petrol-powered mock-up was built, so this project progressed a little further than those mentioned previously, uh, but a fully working prototype was never produced. So there we have uh, three interesting early Cold War designs um, to get round the uh, I'd get round the issues with uh, fuel consumption of heavy armoured vehicles. Uh, as, as noted, the problem being if you irradiate the crew in the process with the nuclear technology that was available at the time. Um, the U.S. Army did produce nuclear reactors, and there was a plan to build a nuclear-powered synthetic fuel uh, production uh, system. The greatest impact of this nuclear power plant on current thinking is the belief that it may lead to a major breakthrough, the solution to the problem of supplying fuel for the propulsion of military vehicles. We have seen that the core of a mobile nuclear reactor weighs only a few hundred pounds, but contains extractable heat energy equivalent to about eight million pounds of gasoline. Problem? How can this vast reservoir of energy be used to propel vehicles? The most obvious approach is to use a nuclear power plant directly as a propulsion engine. However, the weight would be too great for ordinary combat vehicles. And very large vehicles would have serious tactical disadvantages. Difficulty of shielding against radiation and high cost would be other serious drawbacks. The problem then is to convert the energy from a nuclear plant to a form which can be conveniently dispersed and utilized in vehicles of many types. With this objective in mind, the Army nuclear power program is focusing its efforts on what has come to be known as the energy depot concept. Several approaches to this concept are technically feasible. For example, a reactor and associated equipment could be used to manufacture versatile chemical fuels from elements universally available in air and water. Or the reactor could charge reusable packages of energy comparable to extremely powerful and compact storage batteries. The packages of fuel, or energy, would then be distributed and utilized to propel combat vehicles. It's estimated that a single reactor core employed in a single energy depot could produce the same mileage in the supported vehicles as two million pounds of gasoline. With mobility equal to that of the supported combat force, such nuclear-powered energy depots could manufacture vehicular fuels within a combat theater and near the point of use. One can foresee several of these depots providing the necessary fuel for a task force in independent, continuous operation with freedom from the restrictions of the past. There we are. I hope you found that interesting. And until next time, 
Bye for now. Occupation GI Blue. Occupation GI Blue.